क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोस फ्रॉम इकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट हाउ टू डील विद द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ डिप्रीसिएशन व्हेन देयर इज अ पार्शियल सेल ऑफ एसेट लेट्स फिगर दैट आउट विद द इलस्ट्रेशन दैट विल बी प्रोवाइडिंग इन द शीट बिलो so when we talk about partial sale of asset that ideally means that a part of asset is being sold out instead of the complete asset being sold out there hence when we talk about any assets which are interlinked or probably dependent on one or other or if a part of the asset is being sold out being obsolete or being depreciated or being any kind of reasons whereby we figure it out that it is of no use we replace it now in such situations we do not sell out the complete asset hence a partial asset is being sold out or sold out and we have to further figure out how to calculate the depreciation of that specific asset now we'll note down a specific sum for yourself you can note it down in your books and then we'll further go ahead with the preparation of that specific thing or that specific depreciation with the three step process again which is timeline working and then passing the journal entries let's figure it out with the illustration given below now we have figured out the problem that has been mentioned down here we'll be going further and analyzing what are the details that are provided in the sum or in the question now the question state that mrs tata limited has purchased a machinery on 1st of april 2019 costing rupees 50 lakhs this is was a refinery machinery which was purchased on 1st of april 2019 costing 50 lakhs another addition to this was done on 1st of october whereby additional machinery was purchased for rupees 10 lakhs now we have in the financial year 1920 that means april 2019 until march 2020 we have two machineries being purchased first on april and then in october month prior to this they had a machinery which was purchased on 1st of december 2017 costing rupees 20 lakhs that means prior to these details there was another machinery that they has purchased on 1st of december 2017 which the value of that specific machine was 20 lakhs out of this specific machine they have sold out a machine costing rupees 7 lakhs that means a part of that machine costed rupees 7 lakhs which was sold for rupees 5 lakh 50000 Now this machine was sold in the year 31st March 2020 that means this current financial year this machine was sold which was costing rupees 7 lakhs and the sale price was 5 lakh 50000 now we have to further go ahead and figure out that if the depreciation is provided at 20% wdv method what is the value of the asset that we have left with what is the calculation of profit and loss and what are the journal entries that we need to pass further now this is how we'll be figuring out where there is a partial sale of asset if we can see the cost of the asset which was purchased in the year 2017 that means 1st of december 2017 had a value of 20 lakh which then was segregated or divided and then a part of it of 7 lakh was sold out for 5 lakh 50000 in the current year that means 31st march 2020 so you have to calculate depreciation for 3 years that means basically 17 18 18 19 and 19 20 these are the financial years that will be calculating it for under depreciation 20% at wdv method so let's figure it out with a timeline first
So if you can see, we have mentioned down the sum here, whereby the timeline states or differentiates the years into two parts. First, the year being financial year 1920, where on 1st of April, we have purchased asset number one costing rupees 50 lakhs. On December 1st, we have purchased another asset, asset number two costing rupees 10 lakhs. On 31st March, the asset that was procured on 1st of October 2017, cost of asset which was worth rupees 20 lakhs out of which asset costing 7 lakhs was sold out for 5 lakh 50 thousand. We have to calculate the profit or loss as of 31st March 2020. Now, in the next financial year, that means probably the previous one, 1718, we have assets being bifurcated into two parts here. One is 13 lakhs and the other one is 7 lakhs. 13 lakhs is still left with us which was purchased on 1st of October 2017. 7 lakhs which was another asset that was purchased rather the part of that same asset which was worth rupees 7 lakhs as of 1st of October 2017 was sold out in the year 31st March 2020 for 5 lakh 50 thousand. Now we have to calculate depreciation for three assets and the other asset that means the part two of asset number three will be calculated separately to figure out what is the profit and loss in that situation. Now we'll go ahead with the working first. So we have cleared out the working for the first asset which was purchased on 1st of April 2019. The cost of this asset was 50 lakhs which has been mentioned down here. Depreciation is provided at 20% on WDV method. Now as this is the first year for this specific asset, we will be calculating at 20% flat out for 12 months. Now that the asset has been purchased on 1st of April until 31st March 2020 it was with us. Hence 12 months of tenure will be calculated here. That means 50 lakhs multiplied by 20% gives you 10 lakh of depreciation. Now this specific asset will be depreciated at the rate of 10 lakh rupees. So out of 50 lakhs, if you have subtracted 10 lakhs here, the balance that is left, that means 40 lakhs balance that has been left out will be will be the written down value of that specific asset as of 31st March 2020, which has been mentioned down here. Now that the asset one, that means the first asset that was procured for 1920, that means financial year 1920 working has been sorted, we'll go on to the next working here. We're done with the working for asset number two as well. Now, this asset was purchased for rupees 10 lakhs on 1st of December. Now, that the tenure for this specific asset for this financial year 1920 will be December, Jan, Feb and March, four months itself. Now, we have a depreciation at the rate of 20%. Hence, when we talk about calculating depreciation, 10 lakhs will be the cost multiplied by 20% depreciation on it but the usage will be only 4 months, that means 4 upon 12, which gives you the depreciation of 66,667 rupees rounded off to the closest digit. Hence, when we talk about balance of this specific asset as of 31st March 2020, we have 10 lakhs minus 66,667, which gives you a total of 9,33,333 rupees which is the return down value of asset number two as of 31st March 2020. Now we'll go with the asset or the third asset which was procured in the year 2017-18 and we'll further go ahead and bifurcate the depreciation first for 13 lakhs and the second asset which is for 7 lakhs. We'll do the working for 13 lakhs out of 20 which is the asset which is still left with us.
Now, the third asset that means the total asset cost worth rupees 20 lakhs which has been further bifurcated into 13 lakhs and 7 lakhs each. We are doing the calculation for the first asset that means 13 lakhs cost. This asset was procured on 1st of October 2017. Now the usage of this specific asset for the financial year 17-18 has been for 6 months. October, November, December, January, February and March. So 6 months usage for 13 lakhs at 20% depreciation will give you a certain amount. That is 1,30,000. So balance of this specific asset or a part of this asset which was 13 lakhs in the start of the year. At the end of this financial year it will be 13 lakhs minus 1,30,000. That gives you a total of 11,70,000. Similarly this balance will be used for calculation of next year's depreciation. That means for 18-19 financial year 1819 April 2018 until March 2019 you will have depreciation being calculated on 11,70,000 at the rate of 20% which gives you a balance of 2,34,000 that means the depreciation that has been deducted from this specific asset or will be deducted from this specific asset will be 2,34,000. After deducting 2,34,000 out of 11,70,000, you have certain balance which will be the balance for the financial year 1819. That is 9,36,000. So, out of 11,70,000, when you have depreciated or subtracted the depreciation amount 2,34,000, you get 9,36,000 as the balance of the year 1819, which will be the opening balance for the current financial year 1920. Now, when you calculate depreciation on this specific asset, you have to use this balance 9,36,000 to calculate 20% depreciation on it. This depreciation will be 1,87,200 for the current financial year. Hence, the total value or the balance left for the asset which was procured for 13 lakhs or a part of the asset which costed 13 lakhs in the year 1718 is now left with 9,36,000 minus 1,87,200. The balance left will be 7,48,800. So, the asset that was purchased or procured for 20 lakhs in the financial year 1718. Now, in this financial year, a part of that asset which costed 13 lakhs at that point of time has left with a balance of 7,48,800. Similarly, we have to calculate for the asset which was costed or which costed us 7 lakhs in that financial year. This we have done for 13 lakhs will procure or will further go ahead with the preparation of fourth working that means asset number 4 or part 2 of the asset number 3. Let's figure it out. Now we have completed the working for part 2 of the asset number 3 itself which costed around 7 lakhs in the financial year 1718. The total depreciation will be again for 6 months for the financial year 1718 whereby the cost is 7 lakhs, 20% depreciation on it for 6 months will be 70,000 itself. Hence that has been mentioned there. So the balance of this specific asset which has been sold out in the current financial year 1920 at that point of time in the financial year 1718 was 7 lakhs minus 70,000 which will give you a total of 6 lakh 30,000. Now for the financial year 1819 we have to use this amount that means the balance left 6,30,000 for calculation of 20% depreciation which will give you a total of 1,26,000. Hence, 6,30,000 multiplied by 20% will give you a depreciation of 1,26,000 which will be subtracted from the balance 6,30,000 and you will get certain balance at the end of the financial year 1819. 
the balance is 5 lakh 4000 so at the end of the financial year the asset which was procured for 7 lakhs in the year 1718 has a balance of 5 lakh 4000 now now in the current financial year this balance will be used for calculation of depreciation the balance that has been calculated or the depreciation rather that has been calculated on 5 lakh 4000 for 20 percent will give you 1 lakh 800 rupees which is the depreciation amount which will be subtracted from the opening balance that is 5 lakh 4000 which will give you a certain total which will be the actual value of the asset as the current financial year or as per the market value of the current financial year that is 4 lakh 3200 that means the asset that was procured for 7 lakhs or the cost of the total asset which costed around 20 lakhs out of which 7 lakh was the cost which was then sold out for 5 lakh 50 thousand actually costed 4 lakh 3200 as per the market value on financial year 1920 hence when we talk about calculation of depreciation this is how you calculate depreciation under WDV method now that we have calculated the working for all the assets that we hold, we'll further go ahead with the calculation of profit and loss. So now we'll figure out the calculation part of the asset which has been sold out for 5,50,000. Let's figure out with the working first. So now that we have figured out the calculation for profit and loss, if we can see we have mentioned down certain details here. First, the cost of the asset, that means the original cost as of 1718, that means financial year 1718. 7 lakhs. Depreciation for the year financial 1718 is 70,000. That means the total balance left is 6 lakh 30,000 there. Again, this balance is used for the calculation of next year's depreciation. That means 1819 at 20%, which is 1,26,000. If you subtract that 1,26,000 from 6,30,000, you get a balance of 5,4,000, which is the closing balance for the financial year 1890. Now, further for the current financial year 1920, we have depreciation to be calculated at this specific amount which is 5 lakh 4000 the depreciation that is calculated is 1 lakh 800 rupees if you subtract this 1 lakh 800 rupees from 5 lakh 4000 you get the balance as mentioned below 4 lakh 3200 now this is the market value of that asset which was procured in the financial year 1718 costing rupees 7 lakhs now the current market value is 4 lakh 3200 However, we sold it out for 5,50,000. That means there is a clear profit that is available on this specific transaction. 1,46,800 is the profit that has been obtained on this specific transaction. Hence, when we talk about further preparation of profit and loss, we have a clear sense or a profit that has been obtained here. Hence, we'll further go ahead with the preparation of journal entries now and then we'll mark the closure of the sum after calculating the written down value or the balance of all the assets that we hold until March 2020. If we can see that we have further passed on the journal entries for all the transactions now. 1st of April, there is an asset that was purchased for 50 lakh rupees. So, asset 1 account, debit to bank account, 50 lakhs, which has been mentioned here.
on december 1st we had another asset which was purchased for rupees 10 lakhs hence asset account to debit to bank account which has also been mentioned for rupees 10 lakhs The third entry that we have passed is for depreciation account that means depreciation being charged to all the assets hence depreciation being an expense depreciation account will be debited to all those asset account that means to asset account 1 to asset account 2 to asset account 3 part 1 and to asset account 3 part 2 as we have two different parts for the third asset will be further going ahead with the depreciation amount being mentioned in against each and every asset. So now that we have mentioned the depreciation for the current financial years that means all the depreciation related only to the current financial years have been mentioned here that means year 1920. So the total depreciation that has been mentioned here is 13,54667 which is the total depreciation for all the assets that we hold until March 2020. The first depreciation being 10 lakhs. Second depreciation being 6,667 for second asset. Third depreciation being 1,87,200 for the asset that we still hold which is amounting for rupees 13 lakhs. And the third or the fourth depreciation rather the part two of third asset which is 1,87,200 which was further and the next depreciation for the part 2 of the asset third which is 1,800 rupees. So this is the total of all depreciation that we had to charge. We'll further go ahead with the profit and loss entry that means sale entry for the asset third part 2. So now that we have mentioned the fourth entry as well which is the sale entry that means bank account debit to asset 3 account to the specific profit and loss account. Bank account will be debited with 5,50,000 as that is the sale price of the asset. Asset 3 part 2 will be debited with the return down value of that specific asset as of year 1920 which is 4,3200. And the profit and loss account will be credited with 1,46,800 which is the profit on this specific transaction. Now that we have completed all the journal entries, we'll further go ahead and figure out what is the value of all the assets that we hold as of 31st March 2020. So as you can see that we have figured out the total value of all the assets that we hold which is 56,82,133 rupees which is further calculated as asset number 1. Cost price being 50 lakh out of which 10 lakhs depreciation has been subtracted. So the value of that asset as of 31st March 2020 is 40 lakh rupees. Asset number 2. 10 lakhs cost price out of which depreciation for that year is 6,666,7. That means the total balance that is left is 9,33,333 rupees.
and for asset 3 the cost price is 13 lakh rupees which we still hold out of which the total depreciation since the year of procurement that means 1718 until the financial year 1920 is 5 lakh 51200 if that is subtracted from 13 lakhs we have a total balance of 7 lakh 48800 so now that we have the total of all the assets that we hold until 31st march 2020 we have the total balance of 56 lakhs 82000 and 133 rupees so this is the final balance of all the assets that we hold so i hope this sum is pretty clear as to how cal to calculate so I hope this sum is pretty clear as to know how to figure out depreciation on assets which are partially sold out. So when the assets that are partially sold out, whenever there is such kind of criteria or such kind of sum, you have to figure out or you have to bifurcate that asset as per the partitions that are available. That means the asset that has been sold out, the original cost will be bifurcated from the actual original cost and whatever balance is left of the original cost will be calculated or used for calculation of depreciation as we still hold that asset and the rest will follow which is the calculation of profit and loss so i hope this sum gives you pretty much good idea about how to use depreciation under return down value method for calculation of partial or partial sale of assets so thank you for watching this video stay tuned with ekida and keep subscribing to ekida